Hello and welcome back, future scientists. I'm Mr. K with Mississippi Public Broadcasting. We're going to continue our lecture today talking about protein synthesis. We're going to talk about translation in a little bit more detail in something known as a codon wheel. I'm going to teach you how to read it and what each of those codons are specifying for. So let's go ahead and hop into it and see what's going on. Let's just review a couple things real quick. This process is very complicated and I want to make sure we know what's going on before we add any new stuff on top. So in protein synthesis, right now what we're talking about is translation. Remember in translation what we're doing is we're going from RNA, specifically mRNA, to protein. So our goal here is to actually make proteins. The mRNA is a copy of the DNA in the nucleus. Remember the DNA, it's in the nucleus where it's safe, it's got to stay there. So what we do is we copy the DNA and that copy is known as mRNA. Okay? The mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and go out to the cytoplasm. The mRNA is read by the rRNA. rRNA stands for ribosomal RNA. So the mRNA finds a ribosome and they come together and the ribosome is going to start reading it. The mRNA has codons which pair with anticodons on the tRNA. So a three, three nitrogen bases on the mRNA is known as a codon. Each codon is coding for an amino acid. We know we're using the correct amino acid because on the tRNA there are things called anticodons. If the anticodon and the codon are complementary, that's the correct amino acid. The polypeptide chain grows one amino acid at a time. The rRNA binds the amino acids together using peptide bonds. Once the peptide bond is done growing, it detaches from the rRNA and folds into a protein. Okay, so what I really need to talk about today is this thing called a codon wheel. I've been saying that codons code for amino acids. Well, we need to know what codons are coding for which amino acids. And we can use, we can use what's known as a codon wheel, this picture, to figure out what amino acids we need. So each codon specifies for a specific amino acid. There are only 20 amino acids, and there are a lot more codons than 20. So basically, if you think about it, a codon is a set of three nitrogen bases. There's a lot more than 20 combinations of these three nitrogen bases. Different codons can code for or pair for the same amino acid. This reduces the effects of mutations. We can determine what amino acid is being specified by looking it up on this codon wheel. And when we're reading this, you always start in the middle and you move out. So let's take a closer look at this. And I just want to point a couple of things out to you, and that'll kind of clear up what's going on. So if y'all could kind of look where I'm pointing here, OK? So let's take, let's look at a couple of different codons. Let's say that the codon you're looking for, again, a codon is just three nitrogen bases. So let's say the three nitrogen bases you're looking at is G, C, U. How you would read that is you, whatever is the first nitrogen base, you, go, you start in the middle here, and then you read it out. So again, let's say you're looking at G, C, U. G, C, U. So here's G. That's my starting point. And then I'm going to go to C next. Well, I'm going to go to this C because you can see how they're touching each other, okay? And then our next, our last base in this codon is U. So G, C, U would be coding for this amino uh, acid called alanine, okay? But what I wanted to point out is look how many different codons code for alanine. You could have G, C, U. You could have G, C, C. You could have G, C, A. You could have G, C, G. All four of those different codons are coding for alanine. What's going on here is this process of transcribing, making mRNA from DNA, that is a complicated process. And although your body's really good at not making mistakes in this process, it's not perfect. Sometimes a mistake is made. Well, what we do is by using multiple codons to code for the same amino acid, even if we have one little small change, it's not going to totally mess up the protein that we're making. Because if you mess up one of these last nitrogen bases, you're still coding for the same amino acid. So any of these mutations would really not affect the overall process, the protein that we're making at the end. So what's going on here is 
this reduces the effects that mutations have. Most mutations are not going to have no effect on the protein that you're making because of this process that I just pointed out. If it does have an effect, it can be beneficial or detrimental. So it can be good or bad, the mutation can. But by using several different codons to code for the same amino acid, we reduce the effect of those mutations, okay? Usually the, the later the nitrogen base is in the codon, the less of an effect it's gonna have. So if you change the third nitrogen base, that's gonna have a lot less of an effect than if you were to mess up the first nitrogen base, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I wanted to practice this a little bit. I'm gonna put a codon on the board. What I want you to do is try to read this codon wheel to see if you can find what amino acid the codon is coding for, okay? So I'll put it up here. You take a second and see if you can kind of find it, okay? So here are a couple different ones. So I want you to find, again, you're always starting in the middle and then you move out. Let's see if we can find what amino acid AUG is coding for. So AUG, see if you can find that amino acid, okay? So how we would do this, you start in the middle and you work your way out, okay? Well, if I were to do this, I see the, this A in the middle, right? That's the pink one. Our next letter was U, that's this green one right here. And then the last one is G. And the amino acid that this is coding for is right here. It's called methionine, okay? Methionine or methionine, this is our start codon. So most of the time, a protein will usually start with this amino acid. AUG is a, how a lot of our, is the start codon on a lot of our genes. Okay, so that's the process of how you do it. You start in the middle and you work your way out. I'm gonna blow this picture up a little bit, bit for y'all, and I want y'all to try to find the other ones now that we've done one together. Okay, so let's get a good look at these. Here's the next amino acid that I want you to try to find. Okay, UAA, okay? So again, start in the middle, work your way out, see if you can find what amino acid this is coding for. Okay, you might have seen, if you read this through this correctly, you'll see that it's landing on this circle, and that circle is for stop. This is a stop codon. Again, how I read this is I went UAA, and then I could see that out here, the, the, this is the little circle that it's coding for. This is a stop codon. So usually our genes or the mRNA, this is how we will stop the building process is by using a stop codon. All right, I got a couple more for y'all. How about this one, UAG? See if you can find that on this board somewhere. Start in, your middle, start in the middle and work your way out. All right, so UAG should be coding for a stop codon as well. UAG is a stop codon. All right, I got one more for y'all, UGA. What amino acid is this codon coding for? UGA is also a stop codon, okay? So a lot of these, all of these on the outside, we've got valinin, we've got glycine, we have phenylalanine. All, most of these are amino acids. They're all amino acids, but some of them are also stop and, stop and start codons, okay? Great. So here's what I wanted to do next, y'all. I've got a little practice we're going to run through real quick. So teacher, if you could, go ahead and take a second, pass that worksheet out, and then when y'all are ready for the review, come back and unpause the video, and I'll walk through it with y'all. Okay, so take a couple minutes and see what y'all can come up with, and then I'll review it on the board up here. All right, y'all, so hopefully that didn't give y'all any problem, but just in case it did, I'm gonna review it with y'all. Y'all feel free to change or add anything you don't have and try to keep up with this because this could be a great resource to use when you're trying to study. So let's go ahead and hop into this and see what's going on. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do a lot for this task and on different assignments is I might give you a DNA sequence and you're going to have to transcribe it into messenger RNA and then you're gonna have to go find what amino acids those are coding for. Okay, so that's what these first two problems are. We're gonna practice that process a little bit. So let's go ahead and hop into this and see what's going on. 
So for number one, I'm giving you a DNA sequence and your job is to first transcribe it and then use the codon wheel at the bottom to look up what amino acids they're coding for. And then we'll also write the anticodons that are complementary to the codons. So to get started, uh, remember we got, this is our DNA sequence and our job is to transcribe it into RNA. When we're doing that, you will never use a T because RNA does not have thymine, it has uracil instead. So let's see what's going on here. TAC is going to code for AUG, and I'm using my complementary base pairs. T and A is complementary, A and U is complementary, and C and G are complementary. All right, the next codon is gonna be ATG is gonna turn into UAC, okay? And then the next codon, CCA, that's going to turn into GGU. And then the last codon, TGC, will turn into ACG. Okay, great. So we've got our, these are codons over here. These are codons. Okay? Okay? This is known as a codon wheel. So what we're going to do is look up those codons in this wheel, and that's going to tell us what amino acids they're coding for. So let's see if we can find these. So I've got AUG first. Again, how you read this is you start in the middle and you work your way out. So I see AUG, just like that. And I would know AUG is a very common codon. It's our start codon. And the amino acid that it's coding for is methionine. But we'll just write start. This is the start codon. This is telling the ribosome, hey, let's start the process here. All right, the next one is UAC. Let's see if we can find that codon down here. So UAC, I'm going UAC, all right? And that's coding for something called tyrosine. You might also see this called tyrosine, okay? The next one is GGU. Again, you start in the middle, you work your way out, so GGU. This is glycine or glycine, you might see it called sometimes. Okay, and then the last one is ACG. ACG is going to be theranin. Great, so those are, are our amino acids that we're coding for. The last part of this is writing the anticodons. Remember that anticodons are on tRNA, okay? And so what we want to do here is we're using the mRNA and we're trying to find the complementary base pairs that are anticodons. I'll do this one for y'all normally and then I'll give you a shortcut way to do these when we're done, okay? So again, I'm looking at this line and I'm gonna find the complementary base pairs to make the anticodons, okay? Okay, so that, those are our anticodons that are complementary to the codons. All I did was used our complementary base pairs to do that. Now here's the shortcut way to do this, is you might notice that this line and the original DNA sequence are almost exactly the same. The only difference is in anticodons we don't use T's, we use U's. So that's kind of a shortcut way to do it, is once you're finding the anticodons, you can just use the DNA that you started with and just replace all the T's with U's and you'll get, you'll get there the same way. That way is just a little bit faster, but if that doesn't make sense to you, just use the complementary base pairs and look at the mRNA codons. All right, great, let's do another one together uh, for some more practice. So again, same thing, we're starting with the DNA, we have to find the mRNA, that's complementary, find what amino acids the mRNA is coding for, and then find the anticodons that go along with it. So, let's go ahead and get started with that. So to find these, the first one is going to be AGC, and then UUU, GAU, and then CCU. 
Okay, so that, that's our mRNA sequence. Let's look up the amino acids that it's coding for. So AGC, you start in the middle, you work your way out. So AGC is sarin. All righty. The next one is UUU. This is phenylalanine. Okay, the next one is GAU, GAU. That's a long one. And then our last one is CCU. So CCU is prolin, or sometimes you'll see it called proline, but we'll just write prolin for here. Okay, and then same thing, we want to look at our mRNA. We, we want to look at our mRNA here and use our complementary base pairs to find the anticodons. All right, so let's do that real quick. Great. So hopefully that's making sense. We really need to be able to remember those complementary base pairs and remember when to use U and when to use T, okay? I've got just a couple multiple choice questions on the back, so let's give those a look. We can probably knock these out in no time. So to get started with on the back here, three size, the first step of protein synthesis. What's the first step? Well, remember that we do transcription first, okay? And that happens in the nucleus, okay? Number four says, the molecule that synthesizes the mRNA inside the nucleus. So this is a, a name of a molecule or a, an enzyme. What's the name of the enzyme here that makes the mRNA? Well, it's one of the polymerases, and because we're making RNA, it's going to be RNA polymerase. Sometimes you'll just see it called R polymerase, okay? Here's the next one, five, what is a codon? Well, we hopefully remember that a codon is, is three bases, so we can kind of eliminate A right off the bat. So a codon is three base pairs, and it codes for an amino acid. So C is the best answer choice here. Okay, here's the next one, six. Where does transcription take place? Okay, well, let's remember that transcription happens in the nucleus, and that translation happens in the cytoplasm with ribosomes. All right, here are the last two, seven and eight. For seven, we're gonna match these different processes with what is going on. And then for eight, we're gonna match the different types of RNA to their jobs. So which of these, A, B, or C, which of those goes from DNA to RNA? That is transcription, okay? Which of these is RNA to proteins? Well, that's translation, okay? And then which of these is DNA to DNA? That's replication. If we're just making more DNA, we're replicating it, okay? The next one here is I've got the three different types of RNA and we need to match it up with what their jobs are. So which one of these is basically just a copy of DNA that can leave the nucleus? Well, y'all might remember that that's the messenger RNA, okay? Which of these makes up ribosomes, okay? Well, C. R RNA makes up ribosomes, and that's what that R stands for, is ribosomal. All right, and then lastly, which of these contains anticodons and amino acids? That's the tRNA, and uh, the way I remember this is that the word anti has a T in it, and tRNA has a T in it as well. All right, y'all, so thank you so much for following along. I hope that cleared some of that confusion up. Your teacher has some other work for you to practice on, so make sure to give that your best effort, and I hope everybody has a great day.